Would you offer us a practice, perhaps in the domain of compassion? Yeah, I think, I think since I mentioned self-compassion, I think it might be helpful to do a self-compassion practice. And I've learned a great deal from Dr. Kristen Neff. She's a really dear friend of mine. And um, the practice I'll be leading you through involves the three key elements of her model, which is mindfulness, kindness, and common humanity. Those are the three elements of self-compassion. So we can begin this self-compassion practice by first just thinking of an area in your life where you're suffering, where you're frustrated or overwhelmed or afraid. I think right now many of us are feeling that way. So let your eyes close and just taking a moment to feel the pain in your own heart, in your own being. And maybe just naming that, I'm scared, this is hard, I'm feeling overwhelmed. Simply name, naming your emotion, this is our mindful practice. When we name our emotions, it calms down the physiology, helps us see them more clearly. And then as you're ready, you can Begin to infuse your mindfulness with this kindness, with this self-compassion. Sweetheart, this is scary. I'm here. I care about you. I'm on your team. It's such a radical approach to be your inner ally instead of your inner enemy. I often like to just put my hand on my heart when I'm practicing self-compassion and first just feeling that gesture of self-care. I'm on your team, I care. Feeling your breath and maybe even feeling your heartbeat. So extraordinary, this heart that knows exactly what to do to take care of you. The heart is sending oxygen and nutrients to every cell in your body right now. So see if you can just rest and receive the care of your own heart. And then as you're ready, Imagine all the other people right now who might be scared or overwhelmed or facing a similar issue as you are. So often we isolate, we feel alone in our pain. And so this third element of self-compassion is our common humanity, is our recognition that none of us are alone, that we're all in this together. And so begin sending your compassion out to everyone else who might be in a similar circumstance, wishing them greater ease, that their suffering passes quickly, sending your care. Notice how that feels. And as you're ready, you can come back to yourself, this one sitting here and bringing that compassion back. So what I often like to do is as I breathe in, I breathe in compassion for myself. And as I breathe out, I send it out into the world. And you can feel how you're part of this elegant cycle how we belong to each other. Planting these seeds of compassion. It's okay if it's not perfect. You don't need to feel it 100%, but just see if you can practice 5% more kindness toward yourself. 5% more trust. We know from neuroscience that whatever you practice grows stronger. 
So the real question is, what do you want to grow? Each breath, each moment, planting the seed of compassion. As you're ready, you can take a deeper breath in and out. And then just letting some light come back in through your eyes. You can stretch your arms above your head if you like. And just taking a moment to let the nourishment of this practice really seep in so that you can encode it in your long-term memory and take it with you. Good. Thank you, Sean. That was quite lovely, quite helpful. Is there a short form practice that, for example, when one is in the midst of uh, an interaction uh, and they're beginning to feel uh, much of what can be felt when one cares deeply and there's a lot of pain or suffering going on that one might draw upon? Yes. Yeah, so this same practice can be done in three simple steps in 30 seconds if you want. So first is mindfulness. You just name what you're feeling, overwhelm or pain or you know tremendous empathy, whatever it is. Second, bring kindness to yourself. Sweetheart, this is hard. You can use any term of endearment. I happen to say sweetheart. I get teased a lot for it, um, especially by my son. And, and the third one is our common humanity, which is just recognizing that you're not the only one that's overwhelmed right now or anxious right now and to send that compassion and care out to other people. And what I find is that part is, is it's so important that one, it helps us kind of sense our interconnectedness and our interdependence. And two, and this happens a lot for me, when I try to send kindness to myself, sometimes it's a little dry or it doesn't feel like really, um, in, uh, really warm. But when I um, think of other people who are suffering, or if I think of my dear friend who's also struggling or something like that, my heart just opens. And then I can bring that kindness back to myself. So I can send it to my dear friend, and then I can bring it back to myself. And that for me is the huge shift for self-compassion, is, is to treat myself like I would treat a dear friend. And it doesn't work if you try it the other way, I'll tell you. I've tried imagining what a dear friend, let's say imagining what Scott would say to me if I was suffering, and all your kind words and all your compassion, I'm just like, yeah, 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 whatever. But if I imagine what I might say to you, Scott, then I feel my love for you, I feel my care, and my heart naturally opens. And so that's when I am trying to teach self-compassion. I invite people to imagine a dear friend in their exact same shoes. Yeah. the. Uh... I love that. And, and it's, it is, that is such an interesting, like asymmetrical relationship, right? And how loving kindness can perhaps, I would imagine, be helpful uh, along with the self-compassion that they support and reinforce each other. Absolutely. And that's why, in fact, the, the four Brahma Viharas that you spoke of before, these are kind of the four... Um, they, they work together. And so we have metta or loving kindness. We have compassion practice. We have equanimity and we have sympathetic joy or um, empathic joy. And, and, and I like the word empathic joy actually, because that's really what we're doing. We're feeling someone else's joy and we're taking joy in it. But these four separate um, paths work together. So if I'm practicing loving kindness and I meet compassion, or and I meet suffering. I go to compassion. If I'm practicing compassion and I get overwhelmed, it's too much. I go to equanimity, or I go to empathic joy to kind of boost me up. And so instead of thinking of people who are suffering, I think of people who are joyful. Someone, who, my friend who just had a baby, or my friend who just got married, or my, you know, whatever it is, and that allows the heart to become steady again. And so it's this beautifully interwoven um, practice. Uh, thank you for, for, for putting that together for us. I think that that's so powerful and so useful.